Good morning and welcome to the Women's Wednesday Entrepreneur Series. I'm Brandi Stitt, the Program Director for the Women's Business Center in Kansas City. Today, we're going to focus on accessing capital in Kansas City um, and focusing really around um, the difference between debt and equity funding and different uh, resources and funding sources that are available to you um, within the Kansas City market. Um, we'll also talk about some federal programs specifically through the SBA as well. Just a couple of housekeeping items before we get started. We are recording today's session and we will post the recording of our session on the Women's Business Center's YouTube channel. I will share in the chat box um, throughout the session links to our YouTube channel so that you um, can certainly click on that and visit um, our YouTube station and see all of the different webinars we've previously hosted if you've missed any um, or would like to revisit some of the sessions we've already hosted. If you do have questions, feel free to pop those into either the chat box or the Q&A. Uh, Kelly and I will both uh, monitor those throughout the session um, and we'll, we'll do our best to answer your questions throughout. Um, and so with that, I'm going to go ahead and get us started. So today's session will um, be presented uh, by myself, as well as Kelly Sears, who manages the Women's Capital Connection for the Women's Business Center. Um, and so she's going to do a little bit of an additional introduction of herself here in just a minute. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here with our presentation. Uh, just a second here. All right, there we go. All right, Kelly, I'm gonna hand it over to you to get us started. All right, um, so I am Kelly Sievers. I manage the Women's Capital Connection, uh, which is part of the 1KC for Women Alliance. Uh, and uh, the Women's Capital Connection is a, uh, a network of women investors that invest in women-led companies. Uh, we do co-invest also with Mid-America Angels here uh, locally and through the Enterprise Center in Johnson County. All right, um, talking about what kind of entrepreneurs power Kansas City and um, some of these numbers may have changed here um, over the last couple of years, but as you see here, uh, there's the majority of entrepreneurs in Kansas City are micro enterprises. Those are usually self-funded. They don't require a lot of capital to launch. A lot of times they don't have a physical location. Uh, next are Main Street type businesses. So in my past life, I owned businesses in the retail space and I had a, a store on the plaza. Uh, those are Main Street type businesses and um, they have a physical location. Uh, second stage firms are those that generate uh, millions of revenue and then innovation led companies are those technology and biotechnology type companies that a lot of times require equity capital and a lot more funding to grow large quickly. Move on there. The next one really just kind of shows a different graph of what percentage um, are each of these types of businesses that you kind of saw in the chart earlier. <clears throat> so questions to ask yourself as you get started in business or as you grow your business, how much money do I need? What type of business is this? And what type of capital is most appropriate? Uh, there's, um, you know, a lot of funding that Brandy's going to talk about uh, with that's debt funding, um, whether it be a microloan um, or financing through a bank or traditional institution, or is this a company that's going to need equity type financing? And that means folks buy into your company and get stock in your company. So you have several owners at that time. 
You want to go ahead and take over? Yep. So I'm going to briefly talk about some of the COVID relief funding programs that are still available. Um, as many of you probably know, um, the Paycheck Protection Program um, has closed, has been closed for a while, but there are still some uh, programs available to people that are experiencing um, still experiencing negative impacts related to um, the COVID pandemic. The economic injury disaster loans um, are open and available. I'm going to talk. There is a, a funding portal that's available through SBA.gov that lists different types of funding programs that are still open um, that are not specifically SBA related programs, but that are other federally focused um, and locally focused programs that they were able to populate into an index that um, is something that you could go and try to identify if there are still some programs that fit for your business. And then there's a, the Kansas City Region Small Business Relief and Recovery Loan Fund that's specific for Kansas City businesses. Um, so I'm going to talk briefly about the COVID funding program. So the Economic Injury Disaster Loan, this is a loan directly from the Small Business Administration, and it is a low interest long term loan um, that you will apply directly from the SBA to receive. These loans can be used for working capital, general business operating expenses, and it's essentially based upon six months of fixed expenses. So this is not a loan that you decide I want to borrow X amount of dollars. It's essentially um, calculated based upon what you list in your application as six months of the fixed expenses. And that is the amount of the loan that you receive. They are low interest loans and they're long term loans. So these are 30 year terms. And that, again, is not a negotiable term. These interest rates are not negotiable. These are set um, by the SBA. There's not a penalty for early repayment. So certainly you don't have to maintain the loan over the 30 year term if you determine that you, know, you wanna go ahead and pay it off early. Um, collateral is required for loans over 25,000 and those are typically going to be um, collateral in the form of fixed assets. So real estate, large equipment, um, those types of collateral um, components are what the SBA is going to be looking at. No portion of this loan is forgivable. So this is unlike the Paycheck Protection Program where they were forgiving the loan if it was used for allowable expenses. This, this is truly a loan that must be repaid um, and is not forgivable. However, payments are deferred for one year. So um, the application is pretty straightforward. Um, if you are interested in uh, applying for this loan, um, you can go to sba.gov under their COVID relief um, funding programs, and you'll be able to identify and um, where the application is. Um, it, it's a, a very straightforward and basic online loan application. Um, definitely, if you have questions as you get in there and need some help, you can always reach out to me. Um, I've, I've definitely helped my fair share of small businesses apply for this one. So um, additional SBA relief fund programs, and these are all listed on the SBA.gov site. Um, the shuttered venue operator grants are still available. Um, these are for, um, as it states, shuttered venue operations, um, anyone involved in uh, the performing arts, um, you know, event managers, program managers, those types of things are eligible. There's a list on SBA.gov of all the types of businesses that would be eligible for these grants. Um, SBA Express Bridge Loans, um, SBA Debt Relief. These are for, um, it's debt relief for anyone that has an existing SBA traditional loan. So the 7A or 504 loan borrowers, if you had one of those prior to COVID, um, so prior to March of 2020, then um, there was, uh, there is debt relief available for those borrowers. And you, again, you can find these all at sba.gov. 
So if you are local to the Kansas City market, um, there is a relief fund available for businesses that um, was closed for a temporary amount of time, but it reopened on July 15th. Um, so these are loans up to 50,000. They're zero interest for the first 12 months, 2% interest for 13 to 24 months, and then 4.5 for the remainder of the three-year term. So these are targeted for non-essential small businesses that were negatively impacted uh, by COVID that have less than 20 employees and less than 2.5 million in revenue. Um, the application is completely online through altcap.org. Uh, you can go there to get more information and to complete the online application. Um, I, I know that it, the application should still be up. Um, while you're at Altcap, you can take a look at some of the other programs that they have avail available, which I'm going to talk about later um, that are not specific for COVID relief. Um, but definitely uh, check out this uh, loan program if you are a Kansas City based. Uh, Kansas City based company that's still negatively impacted by COVID. So I'm going to shift gears. We're going to talk, um, we're, we're not going to talk about the COVID funds anymore. We're going to talk more about um, just how to fund your business. And then we'll roll into debt funding. And then I'll hand things back over to Kelly to talk about the equity side. And of course, Kelly's probably going to jump in at any time as she has a lot of experience on the debt funding piece as well. So when you look at how you're going to fund your business, the first thing you need to look at are what are your personal funds that you have to contribute to this business? Um, as, um, as many of you probably anticipate and would think as a startup, um, it's going to be difficult to receive external funding if you haven't put your own skin in the game, as we like to say. So what are your sources of personal funding? Well, a lot of people use their own cash or savings that they have. Um, a lot of people will use bootstrapping techniques. So getting by with what you already have. Do you already have a laptop? Do you already have software? Um, are there ways that you can trade out um, services with another vendor? So, you know, maybe you need, um, you know, assistance with, you know, getting a certain uh, marketing piece created. Maybe you can, you know, trade out services with a, mar a marketing company based on what you do. You can provide some services to them. They can provide some services to you. So can you do some bartering in that way? Um, a lot of people will use their home equity. So um, they'll use a home equity loan um, as a way to use that funding to get their business started. That's something that we've seen um, our, our clients do. Um, and a lot of times those are lower interest loans. Um, if you already have a decent amount of equity in your home, that's a great way um, to use it. Friends and family, um, you know, they're you know, a lot of family members or friends that believe in you, believe in your concept, believe in your business that would be willing to um, loan you money or give you an investment um, into your business. That's always a great and cheap way to get uh, some funding. Credit cards are another way that we see clients um, using, you know, if you have a lot of, you know, credit available through your credit cards. Um, and we know a lot of businesses that fund that way. Keep in mind that if you are using credit cards to fund your business, um, that's going to impact your credit score over time. So the less credit you have available on your credit cards, the less um, the lower your credit score is going to be, which may impact your ability to secure outside funding through um, through debt funding sources. So keep that in mind as well. Um, a lot of people will use um, their stock portfolio or retirement accounts um, as a way to also fund their businesses. Um, you always want to keep in mind um, if there are any tax implications related to, um, to those as well. I'm not going to go too deep into this, um, this slide because we have a lot to cover in a short amount of time. Um, but, but the important thing to keep in mind is that there really are 
different sources of funding that make the most sense depending upon the stage of business that you're in. So for example, in, at an idea stage or a startup stage, it can be really challenging to secure traditional debt financing through a bank or even an SBA loan um, because you don't have a financial um, performance history of your business and um, they're typically riskier endeavors, um, whereas you know equity might be um, or a grant might be a great uh, funding source for an early stage business. So um, the, the point here is really at different stages of your business, it makes more sense um, to have different types of funding and there will be more types of funding available to you. So we're gonna talk, I wanna just briefly talk debt versus equity. So what is debt? Debt is a bank loan or a loan from another lender that allows you to maintain ownership and control of your business. So you're essentially repaying this loan with interest. So there's going to be a monthly repayment with principal and an interest component attached. And it's generally considered the cheapest way to grow your business. So most debt funding programs um, are lower interest loans. So these are, you know, typically four to seven percent interest. Um, a lot of the COVID uh, programs that I mentioned earlier are, are lower interest because of the, the dire need of a lot of businesses to be able to access funding to stay open. Um, the federal government and local sources were able to price those interests very low on those loan products. Um, so unless you're using a credit card and then those obviously it's a debt product, but the higher they're higher interest rates. But generally speaking, we're gonna be talking about debt in terms of a bank loan or another loan that you're receiving. And then Kelly will talk a little bit on the equity side here. Kelly, you're muted. I know. <laughs> I just saw that. So I always say, if you can get debt funding for your business, get debt funding for your business. Um, you do maintain control. I know a lot of people don't even, you know, they like, I don't want to get into debt and I want to have investors. I always kind of say it sounds all sexy to have investors. Not so much. Uh, a lot of times, um, because you do give up part of the uh, part ownership of your company when you do bring on investors. Um, and investors don't get their money back until the company actually exits. So that means you have to have a clear cut exit strategy as well. And a lot of times when you run your business, you don't know what that's going to be. You might want to hand it to your kids, you might want to run it till you drop, I don't know. But if you go get equity, that means you have shareholders, you have to answer to those shareholders and you need to have a clear cut exit strategy for that. Now it can have huge benefits beyond the money, which it says in that a lot of uh, investors can introduce you to folks, whether it be uh, customers, other vendors, other sources of capital. So that's more about equity. So in looking, and Kelly kind of talked touched on this at the very start of the session, but when you're looking to decide if you need to raise debt or equity capital, um, there's just a couple things to consider here. So first you need to determine precisely how much money you need. You need to determine the type of funding that's the most appropriate based on um, what type of business you are and how you plan to use the funding. And then, Step three would be really developing a strategy for engaging potential bankers or investors. So we always say the time to, um, you know, start planning to raise money is not when you need it. It's before you need it, right? So, um, you know, you, you want to make sure that you have those relationships with your banker in advance of approaching them for a loan. You want to know what types of um, businesses they lend to, what type of collateral they require, what the application process is. Um, so, and the same with investors um, in the, and Kelly can speak to this, in the Midwest, um, investors are, private investors tend to be very quietly investing. So they are often a challenge to find, um, whereas some of the um, angel groups, which Kelly will talk about, um, they're more publicly available. But if you're looking for private investors, sometimes it takes um, a lot of work within your network to identify who those individuals are. 
So I'm going to talk about debt and then um, I'm going to talk about some other programs that are available to you debt related. So debt provides liquidity, not investment. Um, and these, um, the reason for this is that banks are highly regulated. So they have stringent underwriting criteria that they have to look at to be able to protect their, their liquidity and um, the assets of their clients that have depository accounts because essentially banks are lending out the money from those depository accounts, they have to have liquid assets as well. So they're very highly regulated by the federal government, which means that they have to have stringent underwriting requirements. Banks in their underwriting look at the five C's, we like to call it. So the first is credit. They are going to look at your credit report and your typically in traditional institutions um, really want to see credit scores above a 700, which means that they're going to want to see strong payment repayment history in your credit report. So they're looking at, you know, do you have late payments? Do you have um, high levels of credit card debt? How much credit do you have available to you? Um, are there bankruptcies? Are there tax liens? They're looking at those types of things that are going to be on your credit report. And essentially, they want to know, do you pay your debt? Because if you're not paying other debtors, you're probably not going to pay them back either. They're also looking at collateral. So do you have assets that you can secure against this loan? So collateral assets generally would be um, real estate. Do you own a home? Um, do you have home equity in a home? Do you own a car? Um, do you have large pieces of business equipment um, that you could secure against collateral? And when looking at collateral, keep in mind that most banks want to see a 100% match of collateral to the loan. Um, that isn't always the case, but generally um, a traditional lender wants to see a 100% match. Micro lenders and other um, non-traditional lending institutions, um, they don't have stringent collateral requirements. Um, you know, they might have, you know, okay, we only need 60 to 75% of a collateral match. Um, and they might value your collateral differently. So for example, let's say you have $100,000 of equity in your home that you're using to secure as collateral. Um, they're gonna look at, okay, we'll count 80% of that as collateral. So the reality is you really only have $80,000 of collateral that you can use to secure against that loan. Um, each institution is going to value your collateral differently. Um, so that's based on their underwriting um, guidelines. And so that's something to keep in mind as well. Your commitment. So what is your commitment to this business? Have you put your own... Um, sweat in the game. So are you already functioning as, you know, the operator of the business? Have you put money into the business already? Um, do you have a business plan that you've already put in place? Um, you know, have you spent the time to do that? They're going to be looking at your character, which also kind of goes back to all of these pieces um, as it relates to, you know, do you do they think that you can do what you say you're going to do? Um, do you have a history of um, being able to perform in this business or a business like this? Um, have you been paying your other debtors? Um, things like that. And then cash flow is uh, cash is king. So do you have cash flow to be able to make your loan payment? So, and to still be able to operate the business and grow the business. And cash flow could come from the business itself. Cash flow could come from, you know, if you're an early stage business, you know, maybe this is a part time business for you right now. Do you have other income sources through either a job or a spouse or um, a significant other um, or a family member that can help to pay those to help the, with the cash flow to make those payments in the event that you are not able to make the loan payment back? Local micro lenders, community banks, and credit unions are great options, especially for small and early stage businesses. Um, so don't discount these types of lenders as a good option for you. 
So the debt funding application requirements, this is going to be pretty standard for most lending institutions, including um, micro lenders and non-traditional um, lending institutions. And, um, you know, every application is going to look differently, but keep in mind that these are the types of documents that they are going to request of you um, in order to basically support what's listed in your application to them. Um, I always say it's great to have everything prepared and ready to submit when you submit your application to the bank. The last thing that a lender wants to do is to have to go back with you and say, okay, well, you only gave me your personal tax returns, not business. You only gave me one year, not two. Um, they don't like chasing these documents down. And it really doesn't speak well to your commitment to the process of securing a, a loan from them. So it's always best to have everything pulled together to put your, for your best foot forward with a lender. And quite frankly, they'll appreciate it. Um, as your advocate to the underwriting committee, you want them to be as appreciative of all the work that you've done up front to make their job easier. So they're gonna wanna see business and personal tax returns for generally two years. If you have a job or if you have a co-borrower that has a job, um, they want the w to see W-2 statements. They want personal and business bank statements, typically three months. Um, and here's my little tip to you. If you, have a, if you have a business, please have a business banking account and don't commingle your personal with your business bank accounts because that makes it really difficult um, not only for you to operate your business, it makes it difficult for external lenders to understand um, what money's coming in for your business and what money's going out. Um, so my little, there's my soapbox. Um, you'll need to provide authorization to pull credit reports for all borrowers. Um, you'll generally need to provide a list of how you plan to use the funds um, with the amounts of, of what you're using it for a list of collateral pledged and the estimated value of that collateral, um, a business plan. Uh, generally, they wanna see three years of financial projections for startups and for existing businesses, they wanna see, if you have it, three years of your uh, income statement. So your balance sheet, income statement and cash flow plus an additional three years of financial projections. So um, those are typically what you're gonna be asked to provide. Now I'm going to jump into some of the different um, loan programs that are available to you. The first, um, I've already mentioned Altcap um, for the Small Business Relief Fund, but Altcap is, um, they provide a variety of different loan funds to Kansas City um, based companies and they've kind of expanded even um, to, I would say about 15 counties surrounding the Kansas City Metro as well. So it's not just, um, not just Kansas City. They have the Casey Growth Loan, which is a newer loan product for them that is very based on very unconventional underwriting. It's a completely online application submission, and it's a three-step process. Um, these are loans up to $25,000. there is no collateral required and no minimum credit score is required. These are um, really and truly character-based loans that rely upon an algorithm that was developed by um, a company called LenderFit. And um, it, that's what Altcap has been using. They've done, I think, somewhere around 30 loans using um, this algorithm so far. So the first step is that you complete the online loan and the algorithm will automatically populate for you um, based on their system, a score, which will determine whether you're eligible to continue on um, in the process for a loan. And if you are eligible, it will determine how much you might be eligible to receive in the loan product. The second step is um, there will be an, a review through their loan review committee to determine if you will move on to the third step. And the third step is that you will actually do a short pitch to their loan review committee. So um, 
Again, it's a three-step process, very unconventional. Um, but if you are in a situation where you don't think that your credit score will get you the loan or you don't have the collateral, this might be something to look at. They have um, microloans that they also provide, which um, use their microloan underwriting. Um, these are loans up to $50,000, and you're going to be required to complete an application and provide the supporting documentation, just like what I had listed on the previous slide. Um, and there is a standardized underwriting process that they go through. But as a, a community development financial institution, they have much more relaxed um, underwriting processes and collateral and credit requirements. Um, they also have a couple different other very specific microloan products. They have the Diversified Contractors Growth Fund, and these funds are for women, minority, and veteran-owned businesses that are in the construction industry. They have ArtCap, which is a microloan fund for artists, and then they have the Kansas City Home Rehabber Loan Fund, which is a fund for small contractors that are revitalizing Kansas City near neighborhoods that have been negatively impacted by the effects of abandoned homes. These are, again, very specific microloan products, um, but they also have their general microloan, small business loan for any industry, um, if you're interested in looking at that. And these loans are really intended for, in, for businesses that are not able to secure traditional loan funding through a bank or a credit union. So if you know that your um, credit score is not going to allow you or your collateral isn't going to allow you to get a bank loan, then these are these are some funds that you might want to look at. So most small businesses um, will go to their bank and um, apply for a loan. And if you can meet your your banking institutions, standard small business lending requirements, then that is the direction that your lender will steer you in. If you're close, but still a little too risky, your small business banker may recommend that you submit, um, that they submit your loan as an SBA guaranteed loan. This is not loan, a loan directly from the SBA. It is still a loan from your banking institution. However, there's um, a, a guarantee that the Small Business Administration provides if it um, underwrites the loan, if your bank underwrites the loan as an SBA guarantee loan. So the bank, the SBA basically will guarantee a percentage of your loan to that banking institution should you default. So that eliminates a majority of the risk for your lending institution should you not be able to make your payments on that loan. Most small businesses um, would be eligible to apply for an SB guarantee loan, presuming that you meet the underwriting criteria of both your lending institution and the SBA guarantee loan program. So what the SBA does is they guarantee as much as 85% on loans up to 150,000 and 75% of loans over 150. Um, the loan can be used for pretty much any legitimate um, purpose. Um, so there are a few stipulations um, that the SBA has in place for the types of um, activities and the types of businesses that they can't guarantee loans for. Um, but this is a very small number of, of businesses and purposes. You still have to meet the five C's and you still have to meet the bank's underwriting criteria for an SBA guaranteed loan. The 7A loan um, is used for short and long-term working capital. You can refinance current refinance current business debt. You can purchase furniture, fixtures, uh, supplies, um, most business purposes. The maximum loan is $5 million, um, and you can, if you don't have a banking relationship or if you're not sure if your lender is an SBA uh, guaranteed lender, you can find that information at sba.gov. 
You can also uh, reach out to me. Um, we have a lot of relationships with various bankers and credit unions in the Kansas City market. And if you don't have a bank, we can help you find one um, that we know that does SBA lending or you know, more than that, that we know is very small business friendly um, when it comes to lending in our market. Another SBA program is the 504 loan. These are long-term financing loans up to $5 million for major fixed assets, such as the purchase of uh, land, building, or the construction of facilities. Um, so these are generally for large fixed assets. These are available exclusively through a certified development company, um, and you can find those also at sba.gov. There are only a handful in the Kansas City market, um, but you have to apply through a CDC to um, for this particular loan product, and it's kind of a combination of three different um, three different, I guess, funding sources. So, you as the borrower. You 10%, the CDC can 50%, and the institution will contribute 40% of the loan. So it's a little bit of a different makeup of the loan, um, but definitely the place to start is going to be through a certified development company to see if you're eligible and to see if this is the right fit for you based on um, how you plan to use the funds. As Brandy's talking about, um, you know, banking and, and loans through banks and things like that, I always um, recommend you, anybody, go to your banker that you maybe have an account with or whatever it might be and ask them what they're looking for, particularly from you to obtain a loan. Um, always remember a lot of times people are really intimidated by banks and by funding institutions. But remember, the only thing that banks have to sell is money. So they're looking for good loans. They really are. And it's, it's I mean, go ask them what they're looking for to, um, to be able to fund you. Go find that out. Uh, don't be afraid to ask. Otherwise, you kind of go into these things and, um, you know, just just, you know, you get everything all ready or you think you do. And then you go to apply or whatever it might be and you're missing something or they're looking for something else. So before, again, when Brandy said the best time to go, you know, get money is when you're not really looking for it. But go ask folks at, at anywhere you know, any about what they're looking for in a good uh, loan. Yeah, and I, I would also mention too, it, you know, most banks have other services that they provide, um, funding services to small businesses outside of just a loan. So there might be a line of credit um, that you would be, that might make sense for your business. There could be merchant, other merchant services that are available to you through your bank. So having that relationship with um, a loan officer or with a small business banker um, to really help you determine, you know, do you need a loan or do you really just need a line of credit? Um, you know, they can help you make those decisions and have those conversations. Um, so definitely, you know, make sure that you're building that relationship so that you can really um, you know, have the money available to you when you need it and you know what you need to get it. So another resource I do want to mention um, before we jump into the equity side of things is the Capital Access Center. Um, the Capital Access Center provides loan-specific counseling services um, to businesses specifically on the Kansas side. Um, and this is available through the Small Business Development Center Network through the state of Kansas. And what they do is they have a network of about 30 previous bankers that will provide a loan eligibility screening. They'll help you to look at loan structuring. They'll provide underwriting guidance and develop mock scenarios for you. They'll connect you with different bankers and funding partners, and they'll give you access to financial training through some of their resource partners like like us, like the Women's Business Centers or the Small Business Development Centers, but they're really intended to help you 
analyze your funding need and determine which type of uh, loan product you might be eligible for um, what and kind of walk you through what the underwriting process is going to look like. So it's a really good resource. It's pretty new. Um, they've only been around for about the last 12 to 15 months. So this is a good resource and there's no cost for you if, um, you know, if you're really looking for that deep dive into applying for a loan and getting, getting the right underwriting um, guidance, this is a great resource for you. All right, I am going to hand it over to Kelly to talk about angel investors. So, um, yeah, a lot. I, you saw at the very beginning of the of uh, the presentation that that very few companies go look for equity type investing, but that doesn't necessarily mean uh, you might not get investment from a, a single uh, from a friend and family member or something like that, which sometimes can be in the form of equity. So angel investors are people that uh, invest their personal capital directly in startups. Um, it talks a little bit about the business, the angel investor, especially in the Midwest, is usually a little bit older and has a uh, high net worth. Um, and they've maybe even succeeded themselves as an entrepreneur. And uh, so they want to invest in early stage companies. Um, they do make smaller investments. This is not venture capital, even, that, even though that is equity investment as well. But um, they, angel investors are valuable to, um, for their industry knowledge and market connections, and they can usually offer those up. Go on to the next slide. So the, your business does have to fit into some following uh, uh, criteria in order to be eligible or to attract angel investing. Um, so almost like debt funding and everything too, you know, you really do need to have put money into your own venture. Uh, you need to move on then to find uh, friends, family, or other strategic folks um, that know your industry that would probably put money into it or have. And then do you have a business opportunity for rapid scalable growth within a reasonable time frame? And this, these are high growth companies. Can you reach revenues of $20 million within a five-year time period? Um, it, we're investing in management teams. Uh, because there's a great idea every minute of every day, but are you a team of folks, um, whether it be you and maybe one or two other folks because you're starting out, are you a team that can execute this? Um, do you have a credible exit strategy? You have to have a way out of this business uh, in order for investors to get their money back. And then are you open to mentoring and coaching? Because we're going to work with you along the way, obviously, um, because our money is tied up in your business. And so we're going to uh, want to know that you can um, be a coachable uh, entrepreneur. Um, this website, angelcapitalassociation.org, is a great resource to find out um, for entrepreneurs, as well as folks who are considering uh, becoming an investor. So hit that website up. Now, when we got started in 2008, Women's Capital Connection was one of like eight women-focused investment groups. And now there's about 17 women-focused investment groups, which is wonderful progress. Still right now, I believe only 20% of all angel investors are women. Um, but when we first got started in this 13 years ago, uh, that it was less than 10%. So there is, there is headway being made. So here's our history. Uh, we started in January of 2008 with 33 members. We currently have about you know uh, 40 or so members. We do invest primarily in early stage women-led companies in the Midwest, although we will look across the country at deals and we will invest in companies where there's a woman in a management position. It doesn't necessarily need to be the CEO. So we've expanded our net a little bit wider. Um, we do co-invest with Mid-America Angels, other groups in the US. You saw some of the women-led groups in the previous slide. We do operate as a network. 
back so that each individual can choose to invest in a deal and can choose how much to invest. Um, we do pool our money together and invest under an LLC, but each individual person can decide whether or not they're going to make an investment. So we've invested over $5 million in the last 12 years in 47 investments in uh, 23 women-led portfolio companies. Um, we have invested in other mid-America angel companies. They look at deals whether or not they're women-led. That's not a criteria for them. However, as a member of Women's Capital Connection, uh, we're also able to invest in uh, the deals that are in front of Mid-America Angels. And over the years, we've had 125 women who have been part of Women's Capital Connection. And it's been a real learning experience for all of us. Uh, angel investing is a relatively new asset class um, for everybody, um, but especially for women. So here's the funnel though that we go through. So um, I get inquiries often daily from folks who are looking for uh, equity investment. Um, so this kind of shows the, the funnel, the, the number of folks who inquire. Um, we, I do quite a bit of vetting with those companies and work with them in their presentations prior to them getting in front of the investment group. So that um, number goes, you know, what does that, is that 10% about or whatever um, of those folks that actually present. And of those, um, few receive funding. So it is, it's a process. So this, this is a side of a lot of logos, but we do uh, find deals through a lot of organizations locally um, and um, or at least uh, identify with some of these companies and watch them as they grow if they decide to become uh, a, a rapidly growing, you know, uh, company, then we might want to see them down the road a lot of these uh, organizations work with startups. So we watch them as they grow and if they decide to become uh, an equity funded type company. So here kind of starts and some of this is some of this, boy, we need, to, <laughs> we need to do this in darker ink. I can't even see it. But it does start here on how, um, you know, the companies start with an idea and they're funded, um, self-funded and friends and family and, and by sales, you know, sales can, customers can fund your business um, just by buying from you. Um, so as you go through a proof of concept phase and there's grant programs out there, um, accelerators you can become part of and they'll um, invest in your company and take some equity for that. So you roll out your product, uh, you're, you're becoming revenue positive there. That's kind of the gray line there. And then as you get toward angel groups and early stage investors and move forward to, uh, if you decide to go on to get venture capital and private equity, that's as your company grows really large. So then this starts, and this talks about the all the different uh, organizations, and this is Kansas City based, these are Kansas City based organizations that fund in these different areas. Um, for example, if you have a uh, um, tech company, uh, Digital Sandbox is a great uh, uh, place to go approach for uh, proof of concept funding, and that is grant funding actually. They provide a I believe it's a $20,000, $25,000 grant, and that is toward product development. So that's if you're developing a piece of technology or a, a software platform, you can go there. Um, and then as you move forward with accelerators or um, other types of groups, and then onward to, um, to angel groups and venture capital groups. Um, you know, I can talk toward this, um, you know, when I, so I had a retail, I had several retail businesses. I funded my business through SBA and traditional bank loans, um, which was, uh, which was great for me. I had a lot of inventory that I had to fund um, or, and, but I kept control over my company. So I was able to sell it when I wanted to sell it. And, um, 
and I had I, I owned a hundred percent of it at the time, um, which was I always say you know if you can get your company funded with with some debt funding, you just you pay interest on the debt and you don't have to. So yes, you do have to pay back and quote unquote answer to the bank, but you don't have a bunch of investors that are trying to um, or that are that are wanting to guide you in directions that they want to get their money back out of the company. Uh, so you really do have to decide how you want to grow your business and how much control you want over that business. Um, a different thing we kind of talked about too is when you go to a bank, um, you need to, a lot, and a lot of times when, when I talk to folks and, and they're looking for money and especially women, I shouldn't say this, I, but I wish I had a dime for uh, when I would say, so how much money do you need? And they'd say, well, I think I can get by with. And it's like, don't, don't talk that, that direction because you're going to need more than what, you're, um, what you can get by with. And it's, it's difficult to go back to the bank and ask for more money um, it, because you just you didn't borrow enough. And so it's not going to take you as far as you want to go. Um, so it's really important to, and I always kind of say, so how much money do you need? What if everything went right with your business? What if every single thing went right and you grew like you wanted to grow and you had as many customers as you wanted to have? How much money do you think you're going to need to get you to, um, to where you can fund the business yourself or to where you can um, somebody can come along and purchase you if you are an equity type business? You want to add to that? Brandy. Yeah, no, I think that's spot on. And I think the other thing would be, um, you know, a key takeaway is really to be prepared before you need the money. So put the steps in place to help you have the relationships with lenders to try to identify, um, you know, potential investors or to even just start networking with some of those community organizations that Kelly had popped up on her slide, um, get connected to those organizations and to the Women's Business Center because we can help to guide you um, in the process. But um, you, know, you can never be over-prepared when you're trying to raise money. So um, you know, start taking the steps now um, to help you uh, form those relationships and, um, you know, build out that business plan, the financial projections. You should always be working on those. Um, you should always be watching the numbers for your business. Um, you know, as you know, cash is king. So um, you should always be taking a look at those numbers. And I would say also, if you don't have any type of bookkeeping system that you're using, that should be step number one for your business. Um, you definitely need to be using something like QuickBooks or some other bookkeeping system, um, online accounting system that um, will give you monthly reports to look at, and it will make you so much. It make it so much easier for you to understand how much money you do need, and will help you to be able to populate the reports that um, a lender is going to need as well. Yes, know the numbers. <laughs> Your numbers tell you how well you are doing. <laughs> yes. So um, the final slide for you is our contact information. Um, so if you have questions regarding debt funding or equity funding, um, definitely feel free to email myself or Kelly. Um, we will do our best to find the answers for you or potentially make a connection um, to someone else that can help you, um, especially if you're looking, you know, trying to find that right lender for you. Um, you know, we have, like I said, we have those relationships and we're happy to make those connections to you. Um, and certainly, I don't see any questions in the chat, but if you do have a question, feel free to pop it in right now before we close. 
And again, um, we will be posting the recording from today on our YouTube channel. Um, so if you just Google search Kansas City Women's Business Center YouTube, you'll be able to find us. We have, um, gosh, over 50 videos posted already for you on a variety of topics um, from you know, marketing, social media, HR related, um, WBE, MBE certification. There's a wide variety of sessions that you'll find on our YouTube channel. Um, so feel free to visit that um, and, and share with your friends as well. You so, can also, yeah, we have a new website too. So you can access yes. that via womenscapitalconnection.com or kansascitywbc.com. Is that right? Or yeah, that's all, it's, yeah. yeah. Yep, absolutely. Yes. All right. Well, thank you to everyone for joining us today. And Kelly, thanks again for joining me on this session. Yeah, thanks, Brandy. Yep. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you.